Welcome everyone to video number seven in the series on design tips for developers. In this video, let's discuss about typography. Let's start with tip number one, which is about font families. As developers, we generally identify one font family that works for our website. Now, there is nothing wrong in using one font for your entire site, but it may start to look monotonous. What you can do is pair fonts together. When pairing, you still have to make considerations. Some fonts look great when they are large and not so legible when small and vice versa. So it's generally a good idea to have one font for large text in your site and one for the smaller content. Here is an example of a site that has a title, subtitle and some content. We also have a few cards on the right hand side. It's all in one font. We have selected a font that looks good for larger font sizes, but that font isn't great for content where there is a lot of text as you can see. A more common scenario is where we find a font for the content and use the same for heading as well. This is fine, but seems a bit boring. Let's now proceed to version two, where we have a different font for the heading and one for the content. The main article heading and the card heading has Cuprim as font family, and the remaining text has Hind as the font family. Now you might be wondering, how did I select the two fonts? Well, typography is a topic where developers struggle the most so instead of trying to figure out from hundreds of fonts, let me point you to the right resource. I'm here at fontjoy.com, which makes font pairing simple. Click on generate button, and it generates three font families that you can readily use in your site. If you click on how it works, they give you pretty good explanation of how to pair fonts, which I highly recommend you read. Once you're happy with the font, Click on the font name and this will take you to Google Fonts from where you can download the font. You can also make changes in line to see how your text would look with that font. You can also lock a font once you're happy, generate again and this will change only the other two fonts. For good UI, I would say go with two fonts and maximum three if you have really large font sizes in your site. Remember, loading font takes time and may impact the performance of your site. It is never a good idea to unnecessarily load fonts. So that was tip number one. For tip number two, I want to talk about font size and font weight. Generally, as developers, we tend to think to establish a hierarchy or to put more emphasis on a certain piece of text, we have to make it bigger. Now that is not true. Increasing the font size in fact makes the UI not so great. An alternative is to simply increase the font weight. Here in the current version, you can see both value and the corresponding label have the same font size. To make the value stand out, we can increase its font size. However, this starts to look a bit odd. Instead, if I increase the font weight, with a touch of reduced opacity, the emphasis on the number is still there and it doesn't seem odd. So always rethink when you're increasing the font size to add emphasis to some text. Increasing font weight might be the better option. For the final tip, I want to talk about text truncation. Often, we come across the need to truncate text. Text can either be title text or content text. The easiest solution is to add ellipses at the end, like we have done here. But I would say this is not sufficient. If it is a title text, a good idea would be to add a tooltip on hover which reveals the full text. If it is content text, there are a few considerations. One, you can add a link to show more. 
but try to add some context to that show more link. In this case, continue reading is much more appropriate. However, if the card itself is clickable, there is no need for the link text. A slightly more elegant solution in such a scenario is to fade the text towards the end. The card is clickable, so the content can fade away towards the end. But when you do that, make sure you don't fade the entire last line. If the text here is exactly six lines, this would still give the impression there is more to read. Instead, fade out the last few words only. Here is an example with ellipsis and fading out the last two words. You can also skip ellipsis and just fade out the last few words, which is our last version of the screen. The CSS, of course, is not straightforward, but there is a really good article on CSS tricks on line clamping, which is exactly what you need as a developer when it comes to text truncation. Please do make sure to check it out. So these are the three typography tips that you as a developer can use and take your UI to the next level. Thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.